Hey guys, what is going on? It is Beast Day here, and before I actually get straight into this video, I just want to let you guys know that I am in no way or form a UHC god. Now, this video is here just to sort of give you a basic understanding and a more in-depth, um, to like mid-game, late-game, you know, early-game and what you're supposed to do, so if you're not really knowledgeable in the UHC, or you need to brush up on your skills, then I'm guessing this video is sort of for you. Now, I also want to let you guys know that I do run a server, which the IP will be on your description right now. And um, if you enjoy this video, please feel free to leave a like, uh, a comment, whatever you want to do. Other than that, let's get straight into it. Alright guys, so here we actually have the first section of this video. And then this video is actually going to be like the early game stages and what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, and, and you have, sort of have like a time period that you want to do this in. Now, I'm not on bad line because it's really hard to actually record this this there, so I'm going to do this on a private server, so it's not going to be amazing, but I'm still going to tell you guys what to do and sort of give you a realistic situation of what you will have. So, the first thing I want to mention is you always want to get your stone tools. Now, this is one of the first things you want to do, so even if you spawn not in an oak, oak wood biome, um, always grab your tools ASAP to save you a bit of time. As you can see here, I have grabbed them. Now, once you have gotten these, what do you do next? The thing you do next is you try and find yourself an oak wood biome. Now, these are like the, the forest, you know, those like clumped things where they have the green leaves, the really like bright green leaves. They contain apples, and apples are like your only, well, not your only, but one of your only healing methods, the easiest one in UHC. These give you golden apples with 8 ingots. So you want to aim for about, I'd say, 6. Now, my 6 is what I usually get. Sometimes I get more, it really depends on how I feel. But 6 within the time period that I'm about to mention is what you should aim for. Now you might be thinking, okay, I'm done, let's go. Well, no. You still need to get yourself food, and that's obvious. Kill, you know, like chickens there, maybe some pigs and what's, what's around you. And then you also need to get your essentials for enchanting. But why? Why do I need to get enchanting stuff? Well, it's simple. Enchanting stuff can give you like a an edge over your, your opponent. Because you are like, say you're full iron and they're full iron, but you're enchanted. You take one less damage if you got protection or projectile protection. And two, you have a sharpness sword. So you should be able to win the fight even if you exchange correctly. So, I mean, that's really all I can say. But um, we're going to get straight into the mining part now, and I'm going to explain what it is, but before I do that, what you guys should do, like all of this, you should be able to do this all within 10 minutes. Because you, then you need to give yourself time to go down and mine your iron, and blah blah blah, I'm going to talk about that in a sec. But yeah, 10 minutes, I think, to, you know, get your apples, get your stone tools, get your wood, and get your um, food and your enchanting stuff. I think that's simple, nice and easy, and uh, yeah, let's get straight into the mining part. Alrighty guys, so here we have like the caving part of the early game and what you want to achieve within the 10 minutes that you have left before the PvP timer goes off. Now, say I've just dug myself into a cave, which I actually have. Now, when you've dug yourself into the cave, you want to aim for these things. You want to aim 31 gold, um, as many ores as you can, like obviously the gold, um, maybe diamonds, and so forth but you also want to aim to get yourself equipped because you do not want to risk getting killed unequipped because obviously you're not going to be able to do much and the chances of you surviving are little to none so whilst I'm here um, obviously I don't have a cut clean game mode so I'm not going to be able to show you what that's going to be like but I can explain that later anyway so what I'm going to aim is for 31 iron um, also as many other ores as I can get and hopefully some diamonds so I'm going to speed this up really quickly and um, see what we can achieve. Hey right, guys, so I'm pretty much done with caving. Um, I achieved myself 32 iron, 11 gold. So that's basically all I really needed. To have my early game sort of finished 
But um, now it's time to sort of recave, and I'm going to explain some more in-depth biomes, um, rarities, and so forth on the surface. So let me get straight up there. Alright guys, so you may be like thinking, okay, I need to get my 32 iron, I need to get my essentials, but uh, you know, how do I get full diamond? Like, how do I get the good stuff? Now, I have theories, I'm not like a god, and I don't know everything fact by fact, but I do know a few little tips and tricks that I sort of have learnt from playing and um, my knowledge of the game really. Now, I want to explain to you like the biome factor. Now, I've had personal success in some biomes and not so much success in others, but you can obviously have different rates and so forth. I've never done any research into this, this is my opinion, and this is legit, like how I find my diamonds, alright? So, um, as you can see here, we're in this biome. Now, this biome is the savannah. The savannah, I, I really don't have much luck here, but um. What I'm going to do is I'm going to link, or not link, but I'm going to put something on the screen and I'm going to rate each biome out of 10 for mining, okay? Now, this mining means, like, getting a good amount of diamonds, right? So, like, the rate. So, say I put, like, 8 out of 10 for Savannah. That means, like, if, uh, I don't know, like, I'm going to have an 80% chance to find diamonds, if you know what I'm saying. It's just how I've figured out, um, how I've sort of played the game. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to do that for all biomes, and we'll see what it comes to. Alright guys, so there's like sort of my my caving experience and what you guys can sort of learn from it. This is how I've normally caved and um, by far I find swamp biomes the most effective due to the fact that you get a higher, well it's not a higher apple rate, I'm not actually sure but I always find better, better apple rates there and I also find good diamond lock so um, you know I prefer to mine in a swamp but I'm happy to mine in any biome really. Now I'm going to go on to more of the border side of UHC because in UHC there is a border that shrinks every five minutes or however the server has it. Now most people play Bad Lion but there's some people who play Reddit and I'm not sure how it works there but I'm going to explain sort of how the Bad Lion sort of border works. So um, as I'm saying um, here it is. Alright guys so in UHC there is a border. Now, I've just said this, but I want to go over how it works. So, um, in UHC Badline, they have a 2500 by 2500 border. Now, this border starts shrinking at 1 hour, or 45 minutes, or 35 minutes, depending on the game modes. 1 hour is normal, 45 minutes is rush, and 35 minutes is rush plus. This is how it works. So I'm sure I'm gonna like show you what it sort of look like. Um, I don't actually have the servers to show you, but for example, um, say this is the corner right here. Okay. Now, if I want to be inside of the border, yeah, I'd be here. So the border would be like, um, like this across. If you understand. Now, what you can do with this border, you can do many things. You can do things such as trapping. Um, you can also have like say your teammate 
one of them watching here and one of them watching behind like that. Um, you can also, you know, obviously TP into the border if you're not in the correct coordinates. I'll go over that in just a second. And um, the border is where people TP. It's, it's really simple and it happens every five minutes and that's about it. There's not much more to know about it. You just want to make sure you don't get TP'd in that corner because it can be very, very, very dangerous. Other than that, I'm going to sort of go over um, what I just said before. Alright, so with the border, I don't really have any visual representation that I can show you. But I'm going to sort of explain it to you in coordinates. Okay, so say here, um, say we were at 2000... So, hold on, sorry for my really, really cancer tabby chat. My apologies. So say we were at 2500, right? And our coordinate here was 1900. Instead of TPing to the 2000-2000 border at the TP, we would actually TP at 2000 and then 1900. I will give you an example. So TP, the border is happening right now. I would TP to 2000 and then I TP to 1900. That's how it would, um, oh, sorry about that. It would sort of work like that though. This is where I TP and I'm dying. <laughs> oh no, I'm all good. But um, yeah, that, that's how it would work. I can't really go into depth. Um, I'd like to show you, but I'm sure you understand. It's pretty simple. You just want to make sure you don't get TP in that corner because people will trap you and you will probably just die. I'm just going to be straight honest. But that's all I can really say about how the border works and how the timings work. Other than that, let's get straight into the mid-game. Alright guys, so in the mid-game part, there is a few aspects to it. You can do many things in mid-game, and it's sort of like your opportunity to take and do what you want. Now, there's a few things you can do. There's either one, you can still be caving and looking for them diamond armor, or whatever you want to get. Um, two, you can snowball, I'll explain that in just a second. And three, you are probably going to be re-caving. These are the three things that you're going to be doing mid-game. Now I'm going to go over each of them um, pretty simply and so you can get like a basic idea of what you want to do. Other than that, let's get straight to it. Alright, so the first thing I find effective is um, enchanting and then recaving. Now our mid-game, this is pretty simple but I want to go over like the, the basics of this so that you're not wasting levels. Now I find that if I don't have books, the most effective thing that I do is actually um, is actually combined swords. Now, I know, I know using books is better, and I do recommend this. You want to try and get as many books as you can on surface, but say you haven't had the luck, then this is what I do. I would enchant these at level one, okay? So say I got two sharpnesses, right? That, that costed me two levels. Let's just keep on count. So two levels, then I want to do this again. So now I've got to Oh, can I get this cheaper? Yes, I can. So that's six levels for a sharp two. If I work it out, it just costed me eight levels to get um, a sharp two, right? So if I want to get two sharp twos, then I'm going to need 16 levels. So let's do this. Oh, this is that best case scenario. I'm guessing I'm not going to get two sharpnesses again. So let's just try again. Sharpness. Yeah, Bane. So yeah, you, you usually get bad luck like that. Anyways, let's keep trying. Sharpness, hello, smites, then we combine these. This is also an effective thing, rather than making more iron swords, you can just do this. So let's keep a count, we've used 10 levels so far. You do this, sharpness. Alright, so we've used what, 10 levels? 11? 11 levels. Okay. So then we use this again. So that's another, f that we are 15 levels used. And to do this, that would take us 9, right? So we had, okay, so wait, hold on, so 15 plus 9 is 24. We had two failed attempts, so if we minus that, it's actually going to cost us, um, like 22 levels? I'm not, I'm not sure, but this is the most effective way of getting a sharp in my opinion, without books. Uh, you can obviously do this with other stuff, um, just enchant the armor, get two prots or two projectiles, whatever you want to do. Other than that, I don't have much more to say than that, let's get into snowballing. Alright guys, so snowballing is actually an amazing thing, but it's something hard to master in this game. Now snowballing means that you are basically going to go to spawn, which is 0-0. Zero, zero. 
you're going to go there as fast as possible and basically like a snowball effect and just continuously kill people after and after again until you win the game. Now this thing can be effective but it really depends on your skill level because if you don't have the knowledge of what to do in the 100x100 100 100 section you can um, sort of just flunk out and die to retarded things, stupid things or you can just get taken out because you haven't had your gapple management correctly. Now these things, I don't really know how to explain it but snowballing, going to 0-0, zero, zero, um, let's say before TP and doing your best. That's basically what snowballing is. I have nothing else to say about it. I'm sorry. But um, let's get into the last thing. <laughs> I don't even know why I said the last thing. The last thing is recaving. You know what to do. Alright guys, so I don't really have much to explain for endgame. Um, it's really simple though. You can sort of understand this yourself. So you've say you've done all your caving. It's an hour in. You're going to be at the border. And I told you before, try not to get TP'd into the corner but close. So that you can get like a nice battle without getting trapped and um, just work your way into 0, zero and see how you go. I mean as long as you're following these tips or how I play I mean you, could, you should do okay. Just make sure you mine the right bloom, make sure you get your 31 or no it's actually 32 iron, um, make sure you get your essentials, your apples, all that good stuff and just um, see how you go in caving and that's about it. But I'm going to actually explain to you the game modes of the game. So, um, I'm not an expert, so I'm going to quickly go look into these, but I do have a basic knowledge of these, so give me two seconds. Alright guys, so the first game mode I'm going to explain is the cut clean game mode. In a cut clean game, all the ores are pre-smelted, as well as all food being pre-cooked. You have a 100% chance of getting flint when you mine a gravel block. Killing an animal is guaranteed to give you three food, cow, chicken, pig, etc. Killing a chicken will always give you a feather, and killing a cow will always give leather. That's about that's about it, what cut clean is. Diamondless. In a diamondless game, you are unable to mine or blast mine diamonds. When you mine the diamond ore, you are only able to receive the experience. When a player dies, they drop one diamond. Diamonds are still able to be found in mineshaft and desert temple chests. Goldless. In a goldless game, you are unable to or mine blast gold ore. When a player dies, they drop a golden head and 8 gold ingots. Gold is able to be found in a mineshaft and in desert temple chests. Horse list. This is a pretty self-explanatory one. In a horseless game, you are unable to ride or tame horses. You can kill horses for experience and leather. Blood diamonds. In a blood diamond game, you take half a heart of damage whenever you mine a diamond. You do not take damage if you find diamonds in chests. Vanilla plus. In a vanilla plus game, flint rates are increased from 10% to 20%, and apple rates are increased from 0.5% to 1%. Rodless. Again, a self-explanatory game mode. You are unable to craft rods in a rodless game. Time bomb. In a time bomb, time bomb game, sorry about my English, whenever a player dies, all their belongings are stored in a double chest, including their armor and a golden head. After 30 seconds, the chest explodes, dealing damage in a large radius. Bare bones. In a bare bones game, the nether is disabled, and all ores besides iron slash coal drop one iron ingot. Basically a goldless and diamondless game. Whenever a player dies though, they drop one diamond, one golden apple, 32 arrows, and two string. You are unable to craft enchant tables, anvils, or golden apples. I actually like this game mode a lot. Ender Dragon Rush. Not a fan of this one. In an Ender Dragon Rush game, there are four ender portals located at the plus negative 1500 coordinates. There is no, sorry, there is no border shrink or permanent deck. Whenever a player dies, they drop one ender pearl. The aim of the game is to be the first team to kill the ender dragon. The number of ender eyes required to activate each portal in the number of players in a team plus one. Wait, in a, in a team plus one. Sorry. Example, an FFA game requires two ender eyes to activate. Team of 2 game requires 3 ender eyes to activate. Team of 3 game requires 4 ender eyes to activate, and so on. The first team to kill the ender dragon, or the last team left, wins alive. Alive wins. Soup. In a soup game, when a player drinks the mushroom soup, they are equivalent healed 
for a golden apple. So that's two hearts, but without the absorption hearts. Now these last two game modes that I'm going to be um, explaining are basically ones that are statless. But I'm going to say them anyways because you guys deserve to know what they are. You might jump in and be like, what the fuck? So here they are. All Frenzy. So first of all, this is a super OP game mode. Prepare for lots of players to be incredibly stacked. If you mine Lapis Ore, you get a Splash Potion of Healing. If you mine Emerald Ore, you get 30 Terrors. If you mine Redstone Ore, you get an Unenchanted Book. If you mine Diamond Ore, you get a Diamond and 4 bottles of XP. And if you mine Quartz Ore, you get a block of TNT. Waterworld. In a Waterworld game, the 100-100 area is entirely water. Bring your boats. Alright, so now I'm going to sort of um, give like a in-depth tutorial on like what the game modes are. So like... 45 min shrink and stuff, so let me do that for you. Alright, so there's rush game formats. Rush games are held on the bad line for a few different reasons. Sometimes games are open late and need to be shortened, or they finish on time, or so forth. But they work very well with game modes such as bare bones, goldless, and diamondless, and sometimes there are just not enough players in the game. Below are the two rush formats that um, I will be explaining. So the first one is 45 minute shrink. This is the format that we generally use when we decide that we do not have a high enough amount of players for a game to be worth playing, or, you know, worth having the one hour shrink. The 45 minute shrink was made so that the game would not be too short, but not extremely long. And then there is the extra rush, which is the 35 minute shrink, and um, when the final hill happens, it happens at 5 minutes, and PvP enabled is at 10 minutes. So. And also, um, players spawn with 20 stake instead of 10. So there we go, That hopefully that explains to you what the game modes are, and um, I've also already explained... Okay, so, yeah, so I've already explained everything. Alright guys, so there's my little bit of an in-depth tutorial on UHC tips and tricks, basically. Um, I don't have more, much more to say other than... Um, feel free to leave a like or a comment and also, you know, tell me what I can do next time to improve my video. I'd really appreciate it because this video wasn't made, you know, because, I don't know, it wasn't, it wasn't made solely to be made. It was made because I want to sort of express my feelings and express what you guys can do in a UHC game so that you can improve and maybe rise to the top. I'm no god. I said that before. And I'm sorry for it being a bit, bit uh, like boring. I can't do much about it. Other than that, guys, feel free to leave a like, a comment, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. So, peace.